Hey guys, Mishi here, and I have been MIA for a little while. I was actually in Montreal visiting my family, and that's where I've been for the last few weeks. Um, it is about seven hours away from where I usually live, right here, and I did not have access to my YouTube because uh, for some reason it wouldn't let me sign in on my phone um, since it was with a different cell phone provider. Anyways, I'm back, and today I'd like to talk about comorbid disorders, which means a disorder that you experience and are diagnosed with alongside the borderline personality disorder. So I read a statistic somewhere that 75% of us, up to 75% of us, can be diagnosed with a separate disorder along with the BPD. So that means that along with borderline, we are also at risk for having substance abuse disorder or an eating disorder such as anorexia or bulimia. Um, a lot of us can also experience um, depression, which can be diagnosed as either major depressive disorder or a mood disorder not otherwise specified. And mood disorders can also fall into like bipolar. Now, a lot of people ask, like, can you be diagnosed with bipolar disorder as well as borderline personality disorder? And I find that psychologists, psychiatrists, the, the, the mental health um the experts usually get confused as to whether someone is exhibiting bipolar disorder or by borderline personality disorder because they are fairly similar. And I find that bipolar disorder is more um, genetic based and it is more of, uh, of, of something that we are born with. And borderline personality disorder is more something that we are, are, are exposed to and something that develops over time due to our primary caregivers and, and our early childhood years um, kind of manifesting itself and not learning positive coping mechanisms early on. But it is, but it is quite possible to have both. Um, it is fairly uncommon, I would say, um, but, but it could definitely be a mixture of genetics and also environmental factors. So it is possible and I myself am diagnosed with a mood disorder not otherwise specified, which means it could fall under dysthemia, which dysthemia is a lower form of depression, so it's not as serious. But major depressive disorder is something that I feel like a lot of people with borderline personality disorder may also have, just because we, we do experience that depression and those suicidal tendencies. And bipolar disorder is a mixture between depression and dysthemia and mania. So if someone exhibits mania as well as depression, that is bipolar disorder and it is usually slower. Like it's usually more of an onset period of between one to two weeks of each and then, or, or even sometimes a month, a person can go through an episode of mania for a month and then depression for a month. So bipolar disorder is much more um, periodic Whereas borderline personality disorder, we can experience mania in the same day as depression, like same day, and it's more situational. So we we don't necessarily have our genetics, you know, affecting how we deal with things. It's more an environmental factor. So if I get some very terrible news, I'll be depressed. And if I'm in like a really, really happy state of mind, I'm around a lot of people, I can experience mania. Whereas bipolar disorder, it's not as 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 outwardly influenced, if that makes sense. It's it's more inward. It's more um, our brains and how that is affecting us. It's not so much, you know, what, what we're dealing with on the outside. So that can be kind of confusing. A lot of people do get misdiagnosed as bipolar disorder, but it is definitely possible to have both as well as major depressive disorder or dysthemic disorder, dysthemia, that kind of thing. As well, people with borderline personality disorder, I will talk like a whole a whole subject about it. I will do a whole video about it, but anxiety. People with borderline personality disorder do experience anxiety and it be, can become very, very serious. And that can also be another disorder that we could be diagnosed with. So we could have generalized anxiety disorder or social anxiety disorder as well as our borderline personality disorder. And that is a comorbid disorder as well. Um, under It falls under an anxiety disorder or, or sometimes just a, a personality disorder in general. It's not really put in a certain place, but post traumatic I'm sorry, I'm talking a little bit too fast. I'm kind of spitting out information. Let me just talk a little bit slower. But post-traumatic stress disorder 
is something that also a lot of us with BPD do have as well. And PTSD can manifest itself into BPD. So that means we could experience something very, very traumatic and that will forever change how we deal with situations because if that if that event that we went through is so traumatic, we now base all of our, our current experiences off of what has happened to us with that. And post-traumatic stress disorder is very, 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 very serious and it can also become complex or see PTSD. And that basically is very common with with it can be very common with BPD a lot of us may have experienced you know trauma in our early childhood years or recently so I do find on a lot of like message boards and support groups I'm in that a lot of people with BPD also have PTSD now so there's the, the depressive disorder bipolar disorder PTSD anxiety disorders we can experience you know all of those we don't just experience the BPD or we can also experience just the BPD as well. But there are so, so many comorbid disorders that people with BPD can and do experience, which makes it even harder to treat, you know, what which would we treat first? And then we may be getting medications for one thing and then it could combat the other thing, but it may not, you know, it may not work for this or it can make this disorder worse. Um, so also, as I mentioned before, substance abuse disorder, and eating disorders can also, we may have a dual diagnosis with that as well, comorbid disorder, because of how we choose to to act on, on how we are feeling and our impulses. You know, bulimia is more of an impulse, whereas anorexia is more of a controlling, but we also experience self-hatred. So that can manifest itself into an eating disorder. And I find a lot of people as well, like I myself have suffered an eating disorder. So when you have BPD and you have the, those impulses and when you have that self-hatred, it can definitely turn into an eating disorder or even body dysmorphic disorder, which is just a little bit more of a generalized hatred of one's body and, and seeing oneself as differently than you actually, you know, than you actually present. And the substance abuse is when we have no other coping mechanisms and we have those impulses and we have that depression, we can turn to those substances and we can be in very, very toxic environments, which are even more likely to, to expose us to those. So I think substance abuse is also very common of, of, of people with BPD. So those are a lot of different disorders. I also Along with all of those other disorders I've mentioned, I find a lot of us have ADD or ADHD and we have experienced that in our childhood. And it can also later on, um, it can turn into BPD because we have lack of attention. It could be dissociation, but people, you know, psychiatrists believe that it could be ADD. I've also met a few people that have BPD that also have OCD because we have that obsessive nature to us. So OCD... Again, ADD, substance abuse disorder, eating disorders, depressive disorders, bipolar disorders, anxiety disorders. As you can see, there is so many disorders that we can experience as well as BPD. So it's not just our borderline. It could also be other disorders making it worse or, or the BPD could be secondary to your primary disorder. And that also happens often too. I mean... It is so much to deal with, and I'm sure a lot of us have other disorders as well as our BPD, which makes it that much harder to treat, and we could be in therapy for one thing. We, again, we could be taking medications for one thing. It could make the other thing worse. You know, it could improve. Again, a mixture of medications and therapy is what works for a lot of people, but at the end of the day, therapy is is the number one recommended treatment path for someone with BPD. Um, so that's a little bit about comorbid disorders. Um, I have experienced, like I said, eating disorders, substance abuse disorders as well, um, a mood disorder not otherwise specified. And I'm sure a lot of you guys out there also have those multiple diagnoses as well. So that's that's BPD and comorbid disorders. Thank you guys so much for watching. Sorry if that was a little bit of uh, a lot of information, just a lot of wins. I find I usually apologize after my videos. Um, I don't know why I do that. I just hope that the content is relatable 
and understandable and you know I'm I'm able to to uh, educate you guys either those of you that have BPD or those of you that want to help a loved one with BPD so thank you guys so 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 much for watching and for your continued support I'm Mishi Mavros and uh, see you guys in the next video <laughs> bye